Yeah, I know, Madness. A game that isn't wholly obscure or has a bad rating on Metacritic. Well, you see, back in the day, I was exclusively a PC gamer. As a result, I only got to play Halo 3 back in late 2014, and have only just finished wrapping up my reviewing of it now. I have literally been waiting nearly a decade to play this darn thing, so... Yeah, I might be a little bitter being left on a cliffhanger ending with Halo 2, but hey, at least I can finally play Halo 3. So was it all that I was promised? Was it really finishing the fight? Was it this grand finale? Or did I just waste a ton of money? Honestly, I'm still not sure, so this is going to be one interesting ride. So in case you were under a thick anti-shooter news rock until this morning, Halo 3 is the supposed finale, not really, of the Halo trilogy, which is no longer a trilogy now. You play as Green Pants wearing Master Chief, who is searching for his computer AI buddy Cortana and desperately trying to wrap up a lot of complicated lore and plot threads in a roughly 7 hour campaign. There's also that alien guy Arbiter, who I really loved playing as in Halo 2, but he's been relegated to a backseat role because whiny fanboys can't stand playing anything that isn't a human space marine in hulking armor. All the meanwhile, betrayals, alliances, and desperate speeches about saving the world are made. The Prophet of Truth ships breached the lunar perimeter, smashed what was left of the home fleet. Terrestrial casualties from the subsequent bombardment were... extreme. Truth could have landed anywhere, but he committed all his forces here, East Africa, the ruins of New Mombasa. Then, they started digging. What about Halo? We stopped it, but only temporarily. Now, the Prophet of Truth is looking for something called the Ark, where he'll be able to fire all the Halo rings. If he succeeds, humanity, the Covenant, every sentient being in the galaxy... The rings will kill us all. Ma'am, I have Lord Hood. And you know what? As someone who really enjoys the Halo fiction and universe, this is the weakest story in the series, in my opinion. It just rings hollow, especially by comparison to Halo 2, which at the time had come just before this. The original game was a cohesive whole, very late 70s, early 80s sci-fi inspired. Halo 2, on the other hand, turned everything up to 11 with the storytelling, providing two compelling protagonists, new villains to face, and developed the entire universe a lot. Halo 3, by comparison, feels like a janitor just cleaning up the pieces. The game does an abysmal job of getting new players up to speed, and only does a so-so job for everyone else. Yes, all the main characters besides a handful either die or at least get their arcs wrapped up, but there's a lot of filler writing and empty space, despite being such a short campaign. Also, despite being an epic finale, there's a lot less weight here as the battles don't really get much grander than previously. I mean, don't get me wrong, the combat is great, it always has been, but there is no slip space in new Mombasa moment or don't make a girl a promise moment. You never feel like these things are getting worse or more intense. In fact, it goes quite the opposite direction. The game drags on effectively for two levels for when it never needed to plotting through a bunch of spam flood enemy types in some of the weakest level design in the series. The Cortana level may be infamously bad amongst most fans, but the finale is truly underwhelming. There's even a last minute boss fight that just feels out of place due to how rushed it is. The game in of itself is in such a hurry to just get its job done that it never breathes, something Halo 2 only had minor issues with at best. You never stop and take in the vistas or just go exploring throughout the levels. Every mission is trying to be more EXTREME than the last, despite them all playing out almost exactly the same. The Covenant have done something you have to undo, maybe ride a vehicle for a little bit, maybe if you're lucky fight a scarab, now fight some flood, rinse and repeat. The excellent sandbox nature of Halo Combat remains king here, and some particular battles were the best I've seen in the series, but they feel like brief glimpses at a better game instead of highlights. Halo 2 had to end on a cliffhanger because it went too big, so I can understand some hesitation here, but this is the exact opposite motion. Nothing truly feels epic, which is so absurd given the context of everything. Oh, shit. 
ships, fire at will. This is the way the world ends. A few moments are solid and some fan service is appreciated, but it just feels like someone is trying to paint an entire house with one can of paint. It hurts to say this because so much of what is here is well executed and shows Bungie did have some ambition at least. In particular, I love the way the scarab fights have evolved from a single set piece into a unique enemy type that can be approached even more ways now. This is good evolution of design. This is fantastic. It's sadly though just blotted out by eyesores, the most blatant being the removal of the Arbiter as a playable character. There are so many moments where you can clearly see that there was supposed to be a section where you swapped over to the Arbiter, but instead you're left out of the fun because, as I said, FANBOYS! I can't deny that the idea of several campaign levels being cut over this comes to mind because it would explain how darn short the game is. Now, ignoring all this, without the story, without concerns about the length, is it a solid Halo game at its core? Yeah! While definitely the most linear entry in the entire series, past, present, future, save for maybe Halo 4, Halo 3 is good. The addition of equipment is a neat touch and it feels nicely handled, although there could be a bit more variety in the equipment more regularly available. The rebalanced dual wielding system works great here, the new guns all feel like they have a place, and every weapon is fun to use. The new third person view for heavy weapons is a nice touch as well. Also, yes, Forge Mode and Theater got started in Halo 3, but no one really uses them anymore. Why? Well, because this is a game from 2007, and it's currently 2015. For an 8 year old game though, it's still got a lot to show for itself at least in the core multiplayer scape. The active community base is varied from newbies to pros, but still a fair amount of moderates and while the progression system is limited at best, the modes are still very fun. All the things I loved about Halo Combat Evolves multiplayer on PC is still here, just upgraded and with some shinier maps. It also should be said, Halo 3 really has aged well on the graphics sides of things, all things considered. Sure, it's blockier than most games these days, but it still looks genuinely good. It's got the more timeless visual aesthetic that Halo 2 had, and that's all the better for it. Sure, some of the animations for humans could be better, but admittedly they are improved over Halo 2. Controls are also quite smooth in Halo 3. It's a pity green thumb doesn't appear in later entries, as it's my preferred melee button thanks to several years of owning a PS3. The weapon swapping, interaction, grenade swapping system is also a very good use of limited resources, keeping your fingers on the bumpers and triggers and less on the face buttons. There's not all that much to speak of besides that though, never in a million years would I say Halo 3 was worth its original $60 asking price, but I wouldn't say that about most games in general. Halo 3 does its best to try and make a solid finale, and at least hits most of the right notes, just not as hard as Halo 2 or as cohesively as Combat Evolved. It's a good game, but only good. Greatness, it seems, would have to come from an unexpected direction. 7.5 out of 10.